Am I on? Yeah, I am on. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's good to see you here. It's uh, good to be back. We had a good trip. Um, I was just telling a few of them we got to sneak off, and uh, this trip was planned and uh, all saved up and planned for in uh, 2020. And, of course, we all know there's uh, changes in a lot of plans in 2020. And I was going to my sister's place. She lives up north of Seattle, up north in Port Townsend. And we got to ride a ferry, drive our car on a ferry and go across. And and uh, then we got to sail a little bit. I was telling them I got to uh, take the dinghy out. She had crab traps out in the bay. And, and we got to go out and pull up the crabs and pull them out and kill them and eat them. And uh, yeah, it's pretty neat to eat crab a couple of times that hadn't been hadn't been but 30 minutes from being in the bay, you know. So it was it was pretty neat. So it it was a great trip. Good to be good to be back. Um, I will say, um, I still love Oklahoma and uh, glad to be home. Anyway, no, it was a good good trip. So, well, let me ask you a question. Are you expecting? Amen. Well, we appreciate the guys uh, obviously taking care of things while I was gone and you all being here and, and Greg McDougal did a great job. I was so blessed, you know, whenever I knew I was going to be gone, I, I, I talked to him. It just so happened that he was able to, uh, to come and, and it was a blessing. So, but we're going to open with a word of prayer. And so let's go before the Lord. Father, we just come before you tonight. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for the, the opportunity to gather together in your name. And Lord God, we thank you that no matter what's going on in this world, that, that we can come to know you, to understand, and, and, and come into your presence and know that everything that we have uh, uh, that's going on out there in the world, that Lord God, you have given us in this relationship that we have with you, the ability to, to handle, to overcome, to, to walk in the fullness of the life that you've given us and provided for us. And so, Father, as we, as we begin this service tonight, we just ask that your, your presence be known, that, that everybody here that's carrying a weight or concern, that Lord God, that they can literally, like your word says, give it to you, release it to you because you care for us. And so, Father, we just pray that we continue to praise and thank you for the rain that we've received recently. And, Father, we thank you that you'll continue to bring more as we, as we need it. And we give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, tonight we're blessed with the earlies. Uh, they are in after being through several little challenges. That uh, that's not a, that's not a true word. It was a lot more than little. Uh, but they can maybe share a little bit about that. But we're glad, blessed to have here. I, was, I don't know how many people I talked to this this last couple of days said, "Oh, I just love theirs. We're so glad they're going to be here." So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. We are so glad to be back. And we, we appreciate you all so much for praying for Don when he had his heart problems. And um, yes. we just, we felt the prayers and we just love y'all doing that. You okay, know, we're going to do a couple of songs. You, am I on? Yes, you are on. on. You know what my daddy said? What? Always owe a bunch of people a lot of money, then they'll be a lot, a lot at your funeral. Really? Yeah. What'd that have to do with anything? Nothing. I just thought, okay. thought of it. <laughs> You'll get it on the way home. You gotta, you gotta I'll get it on the way home. You gotta hit that. Okay. It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. You know, one of these days we're going to be home, the real home. I'm glad, oh, so glad Jesus saved someone like me. He has given me all that I need. But I'm not satisfied, for I know the other side is a haven for sinners like me. When I can see Someday I will 
city when I can walk down streets up your goal when I can reach out and touch the hands that save me when I see Jesus I will be home when I can see the light of that city can walk down streets up your goal when I can reach out and touch the hands that save me when I see Jesus I will be home when I see the King of everything Thank y'all. Thank you so much. Okay, this is a really old song. It's called Life's Railway. And uh, if y'all know it, sing it with me. Life is like a mountain railway. Thank you guys. I tell you what, what a blessing it is to have them uh, coming out and and singing again. That I want to just make a couple of announcements. Um, we have set a cookout for August 20th at uh, Camp Clearview, and so we are. If you'd like to to come to that a cookout out there, is uh, Camp Clearview is just down, uh, as you go across the road headed towards Drummond. If you go down there about two and a half miles, you cross the uh, 
bridge at about two miles because we're on a half a mile line here. That's why it's kind of a little bit confusing, but uh, maybe they've got the sign up now, but there's some travel trailers and, and a couple of buildings sitting off to the east there. And uh, so just uh, come out, join us. It's a neat place. It'll be air conditioned. Uh, if, if it's hot and if it's nice, we'll sit outside, but uh, we're going to do a cookout that night. More details to come on, on all of that. Also want to thank uh, Enid Livestock uh, Market and let them, uh, let's let Dakota and Clarissa know how much we appreciate them. Give them a hand. Uh, they are absolutely committed to seeing us uh, minister effectively, and uh, they, they desire to see us uh, continue what with, uh, and, and their heart is to continue to, to minister as they go through their week. And so we support them, and, and they support us. Uh, also, uh, every Tuesday morning upstairs here, we have a men's Bible study, and then we set up all this stuff. And, and uh, so if you'd like to come out, drink some coffee and uh, fellowship, we have a, a little bit of fun time of, of visiting, but we get into a lot of word, and, and uh, it's always good. Good Bible study. So we're going through the book of Second Peter. In fact, I'm going to take what we talked about this morning and uh, expand it into a sermon. So <clears throat> Mike and I got, back, got to going back and forth on that. Mike Woods right there. Wave at us, Mike. All right, Mike Woods teaches that, leads that, and then I just come in whenever I'm able to be there and interject, and it's always a lot of fun. The guys cover a lot more ground if I'm not there. But we have a lot more discussion when I'm there, so there's a there's a there's a there's a give and a take there. It doesn't it doesn't take more. It doesn't it it. I, there's things Mike misses, and I have to come. Hey, wait a minute now. What about this word? What about this word? And we try to stay off of other things and stay entirely on the Bible. Once in a while, we get chase a little rabbit trail, but it's a lot of fun and and actually a good time for. And there's probably it's some seven to eight o'clock, and uh, then the guys go to boomerang and eat and. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a good time. All right. <clears throat> um, also, the buckets that are you'll see around are op opportunities to give. That's our offering buckets. If you'd like to give, uh, you can sow a seed, you can tithe, uh, you can offer that uh, CTCC on checks, and you can have tax deduction if you need a tax deduction, or you can take a benefit of that. And if you want to give cash and get that benefit, then use one of the envelopes that are offering envelopes out there. You can also give online through ctccenid.com, and uh, that website enables us to do that. So. Anyway, let's pray over the offering tonight. Father, we just come before you tonight. And Lord, we thank and praise you that there's faithful givers in this place. That, Lord God, there's those that know that uh, this is the, the place that they want to sow seed. That they want to see lives changed and, and reaching people uh, through this cowboy style of, of ministry. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you for those that are faithful in their giving. We know that, Lord, there's those that are giving as they can. And, and we, we thank you that as they do, we, we we stand in faith with them, each and every giver, that, that Father, their, their life be provided for, that there'd be a supply uh, that would enable them to, to have everything that they have need of and that their needs be met. But Father, we praise and we thank you for, for your glory that we do this ministry and we honor you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> All right. Well, tonight I want to get into the Word and share just a little bit with you from uh, uh, Second Peter. As I was saying, you can turn there. I'm using actually a different translation tonight. I'm gonna we we uh, I pull out every once in a while a different translation. I'm using the New Living Translation, and you know I used to be one who only used King James or New King James, and and then one one day about three or four years ago. Uh, God just spoke to me very specifically, and He says, uh, he, he, it, was, it was as clear as I've, I've heard God about, I want, I, want the, I want to communicate in a way, He didn't say it exactly like this, but He basically was saying, can they understand? And the importance of understanding. And you know, I think there's a value in knowing exactly what the Greek and Hebrew says. But every translation has little issues with getting it exactly right. Now, I know before you start throwing rocks or stones or anything, you know, if you're a purist and it's only King James, and we're, we're not having an argument, right? We're, not disagree we're agreeing to disagree, maybe. But some of these translations and, and some of the things that help us is the different English words that come out... 
and help us understand what was really being thought. Because when you look at it, I've done this through the through the years. Break it down. Look at it through. Uh, through the Greek and the Hebrew and the lexicons, and it'll say what is being said in some of the other translations. And so uh, I just challenge you to, to have, have more than one so that you can read and understand sometimes. But if you're the type of person who struggles to understand, like I did way back there, understand the King James... I needed something I could understand because it didn't matter how it didn't matter if I couldn't get it. And that's why I switched to the NIV mainly that I use mainly uh, now, even though I quote usually the King James because for all these years, that's all I that's all I used. All right. So that's my that's my disclaimer about that. But uh, we'll get into this. And I think you're going to see in these few verses that I cover tonight how how uh, awesome it is to see the, and understand what God's really saying. Well, listen, I, I want to say, uh, first of all, there's a, there's a funny story I, I found that I want to uh, read to you. It, it was this uh, dad had come to the classroom to pick up his, his uh, first grader. And as he peeked through the little glass in the door, he saw the teacher just giving his kid. His kid was facing away from him, his son. And uh, he, he, he had this, uh, the teacher was, I mean, you could tell she was just really scolding him and really getting on to him. She said, uh, she said, now, uh, he, he, in his mind, he's like, what, what could Sean have done? His son, same as Sean, said, what, what could Sean have done? I, I've taught him Bible scripture. I've sung hymns to him. I've taken him to church. He, he was just like, what, what could my son have done wrong? Just then, uh, the, Sean answered. He could tell that, that the son had answered the teacher, whatever she was asking him. And a look of shock crossed her face. In an instant, she opened the door and slammed it shut behind her and burst into hysterical laughing. And I, I thought, he, this man thought, to his, and it, has this woman lost her mind? She laughed and she said he, he, she couldn't even get the words out. He said, I was talking to him about and scolding him about being silly during reading time. She paused and chuckled even more. She just couldn't keep from laughing. She said, when I asked him that question, Sean, with his lip tr uh, trembling, he said, it's because of foolishness that, is, foolishness that is bound up in my heart. Now, now I realize that's, this struck me entirely. This, I laughed when I read this. And I told Sue when I read it to her, I said, I'm sure everybody else is going to think of this as funny as I do. But if you think about this little boy, he's basically quoting scripture in the middle of this of this being scolded. He says, "Well, it was it was foolishness bound up in my heart." <laughs> so you understand why the teacher was. Then he realized that all that he'd been doing was actually in in his kid. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes we we don't understand. We, or we don't instantly see the fruits of what we've been doing, but Galatians uh, chapter Galatians six nine says, "Let us not be weary while doing good, for we shall reap if we faint not." And uh, that's that was the the harvest on that dad pouring into his son, and I thought that was a pretty funny story. Well, here in Second Peter chapter one, I, I want us to to read some of these verses, and we're not going to get through a lot of verses tonight. I'm going to refer to a lot of them, but we're not going to turn to a lot of verses tonight because there's so much in this first chapter of First Peter and Second Peter. In verse 1, it says, this is a letter from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I think it's interesting that this refers to him as a slave, an apostle Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you who share in the same precious faith that we have. This faith was given to you because of justice and fairness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, verse 2, and I don't know if she put in the other verses up there, but I told her to start with verse 2, so I've already got her off track. But verse 2 is where we want to get to. And he says, he says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Now this says it a little bit different, but the King James says that may grace and peace be multiplied to you. But I, I liked the idea of, from this translation. By the way, my title is, Do You Know God? My question, the, the question, part of, of what comes up to me that Peter's trying to instill in them was the understanding that through the knowledge of God, that's where 
all of our life is fixed. If we could just understand, if we could know God, how valuable and, and, and important that would be. It says, he, he says, but notice he says more and more grace out of this, out of this translation. Basically, I'm just seeing that, that grace and peace is multiplied. See, the benefits of truly knowing God, that's what we're talking about right here. The benefits of truly knowing God. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. I'm going to talk about three benefits from these scriptures that help us in knowing God. Because there's something about this understanding and knowing God that's different. It's not an intellectual knowing. You know, uh, there's times when we know about someone. You know, people ask you sometimes, well, you know, so and so from, you know, you, you, do you know them? And I said, well, I know of them. I've heard their name. I may have, may have been an acquaintance. I may have seen them around. I know, I know people that know, you know, we have mutual friends, but I don't really know them. I'm always very careful to, you know, to, to, to separate that. I told the story this morning. There was one time here not too long ago. Well, it has been a long, I guess it's been five or six years ago, that there was this preacher that was east of Enid. I don't even know who the guy, I never did figure out who the guy was, but I was east at the time, east of Enid. We were, we were east of Enid. We live on the northeast side, but we were in Garber at the time. And, 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 uh, and there, there was a, a, a story that somebody said, well, this guy's having, his wife's having an affair and uh, they're getting a divorce. Well, one of my daughters, our middle daughter, was in high school at the time, and, and her, her friend, this story comes around that that, that was us. <laughs> well, see, my, 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 our middle daughter, she came home and she said, y'all are okay, right? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, what do, what do you mean? Just smiled at her. She goes, well, I knew it was just, I knew it wasn't true, but so-and-so was saying that y'all were getting a divorce and mom was having an affair. Now, when you don't know the pieces of the puzzle and you don't know either of the people, it, it, I, I could see where it kind of got a little bit out of hand. But here's the thing. I did not get one call from anybody that I know that called me and said, are you guys okay? They could hear that rumor, those that knew us, and knew that that was, first of all, Sue, that was not of her character, and after all, I mean, she's married to me. How can, you know, what, what more could she ask? I mean, I'm just having fun with that one. <laughs> she's learned to put up with me, you know, all that stuff. But, but here's the thing. My example is, is, do you know when you know somebody and it's not in their character, it's not a possibility. Now, I know sometimes we get surprised by things, things we think we know, but the people we know... It wasn't a concern. Now see, how well do we know God? Do we know God on an intellectual level? Do we know God uh, uh, on, a, on a surface level? Do, do, do you ever, you, you have people who you might call friends. I, 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 there's people that are, I call friends, and there's people that are buddies. There's people that, that I, 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 I like to hang out with or I like, if I show up to sale and they're sitting at the sale, I'll go sit by them, I'll visit with them, i talk to them. But they're not necessarily the people I'm going to go out with, go to eat with, or, or spend a lot of time with. We're not going on vacation together or we're not doing that. Doing that. So it's not that level of a friendship. But there's the knowing. See, the thing is, you could say, well, what do you think about that? Is that possible? And I say, well, on my level of knowing... Maybe that could happen. On the level of knowing God, where His promises are concerned, when, we are, when we're hearing contradictory information, you know, one of the things that we got to teach the young generation of kids in high school that are getting ready to go to university, if they're going to university, if they're going to a university, they need to absolutely know who God is and what His character is. Because there's going to be an onslaught of information that is going to try to take that from them by design. I'm not saying every uh, university professor is a bad person. I'm not saying everything is designed. But d the devil has an agenda that he uses. One of the ways this nation has gotten into the shape that it's in, that we would do some of the things that we've done 
voted in people that, that with, the, with some of the things that they promote and, and, and are agreeing with is because people have walked away from their relationship with God and they've said this is no longer relevant. But see, when we know God, people can even bring questions. We could even have questions. We could say, well, I, I don't understand that. There's, there's times things happen in life you say, well, I don't understand that. But if we know God and we know Him on a personal level, we say, you know, I don't understand that. I don't know why somebody would have to die young I don't know, or, or die early. I don't know why this or that would happen. I don't, I don't understand why I prayed and didn't get the answer. I don't understand some of those things. But I know God. And even in the things that I don't understand, because I know God, I'm not moved. I'm not walking away. You can't tell me, I, you, know my, you know my story about the swimming pool. When I'm swimming in the swimming pool and you walk up and say there's no water in there, what am I going to say? Backstroke? <laughs> Aren't you funny? You can't convince me, right? We, when we know God, but there's so many people, unfortunately, that only know God on a surface level. And so that's my challenge to you. Do you know God? How, how well do you know God? If somebody comes up and they say, well, God doesn't do that. God doesn't love you. Or if the devil comes and whispers in your ear, in your ear you're not good enough. Or you don't deserve that. When you know God and what His Word says, then you, then you can stand against those things. So we've got we to gotta know Him. It's, it's an intimate knowing. It's really not knowledge when he, when he says that grace and peace be multiplied to you, or more and more, in that verse 2, more and more grace and peace as you grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. It's not talking about an intellectual knowledge. Now, intellectual knowledge can help. It's a, it's a good thing. I'm not against education. But it's not the same as sitting down at coffee with the Lord. It, it's not the same as reading the book and allowing it to speak to you. It's not the same as coming into a church service where there's anointed teaching and preaching and you come in expecting and God begins to speak and you say, you know what, you, he, he, he said what I needed to hear or, or the Lord begins to minister to you through song or, or some way. So the first benefit of knowing, truly knowing God, is that grace and peace is multiplied. The idea is it's building up on layer upon layer. Grace upon grace. Peace upon peace. It's at a level, if you could understand it like this, it's at a level that's, that's always enough and always more than enough. Grace and peace be multiplied to us. That's what he's desiring. But he said it comes through the knowledge of Him. Now he goes on... Uh, he goes on here in, in verse 3, and it says, By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Now, there's a couple of things. We're going to read the rest of that verse, and we're going to go through the rest of that verse. But one of the things that stood out to me in that is that He's given us everything. He's gifted it to us. You, you could just think about it like that. He's, he's gifted it to us. You know, uh, and, it, and, it, and he goes on there. He says, we have received all of this, all of what? Uh, everything that we have need of by coming to know him. I like that. That's one of the reasons I wanted this translation. I love that. He says, by coming to know him. That's how we begin to, to walk in this, by, by coming to know him. And again, how do, we, how do we come to know him? By spending time in his word. By spending time with Him. Just like most of you have probably had uh, somebody who was either a very close friend or maybe your, maybe your spouse, somebody that, that you fell in love with. I'll, I'll promise you that there came a time when Sue and I were dating back there in high school that I made a choice to go with her somewhere rather than with my buddies. Why? Because she said so. She told me I had to. She said, no, you're not going to roping tonight. You're coming with me. We're going somewhere. Well, there's a little bit of that. 
But I, I went with that because why I wanted to get to know her. And you know what we did? We, we sat around. We sit at the, the, the I've told the story, but we, we, sit, we sit outside the gymnasium after one of the elementary ball games there in Nash, and we sit outside in, in my pickup. Or maybe it was her car, I don't remember, but I remember the conversation. And we talked about how many kids we wanted. We weren't even engaged yet. We were just had been dating a while, but we were getting pretty sure, you know, But we began to talk about intimate things. We began to talk about below surface things. We we began to talk about what was most valuable to us. And those are the things that have kept us married and and loving one another through all the different challenges of life and raising our four kids and and, and going through the different changes and challenges that we've had. and, And what maintained that was some of those intimate things that we knew we had a unified heart on. I knew those things that were, that were of value to her, and she knew the things that were of value to me. When we begin to know God like that, then, then we begin to be able to come to God with our deepest hurts, desires, needs, and we begin to realize the, the reciprocation of that. You know, the other thing is, is we begin to trust Him on a level whenever He says, you know what, you need to change this. Because see, she can say, hey, we need to change this. And I'll say, okay, whenever I get doggone ready to, right? <laughs> no, I, I might bow up or whatever, just being, you know, I'm a man, I'm supposed to, you know. But I end up listening most of the time. Huh? Yeah, I know, we're getting deep. But you know... You know, here, here's the thing. When God, when we know God on an intimate level, we don't mind Him correcting us. Why? Because we know His love for us. See, I can trust Him. Now, it's interesting whenever you begin to, you begin to look at this verse a little more. I'm going to read all of verse 3 again. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. He says, By His divine power... So it's God's power gifted to us or given, He's given us everything that we need for a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the One who has called us by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. So he, he called us by His glory and excellence. Now, there's an interesting word that we want to we define there, and that's that word excellence. Excellence actually means it's, it's arete in the Greek, I think is how you say it. A-R-E-T-E. I don't know how you pronounce that exactly, but that's the Greek word. And it means, a, it is a description of the sum total of all desirable character qualities. God called us by all of His character qualities. And when we get to know Him, what starts to happen? As we get to know Him, all of a sudden we begin to know all of His character qualities and they begin to rub off on us. Isn't it good to have people that that you're around, people that you can look to, people that are mentors and and examples to you, people that you have that have good characteristics? What, what, do we, what do we end up, what do we oftentimes do? We follow those that are teaching and training us. We become like our, 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 our master or the teacher that we have. I was very fortunate when I first went into ministry. I had a couple of men that were, that were very, very good as men, as men and fathers and as teachers of the Word. And they taught me the things that I needed to know for the first, really, first seven years of ministry. I had one year that I, it, uh, that I floundered around and I said, God, i got to have some help. And he sent me to serve under these, under these one man. And then, then it turned into another deal. And, and it was the perfect seminary and, and training and apprenticeship to gain and to grow in, in ministry. But think about, think about it. If we begin to know God... And He's called us by His all of His characteristics, the sum of all His great characteristics. You think about who God is and how He, how he then begins to influence us because He's given us all these things. And, he, he, and that's the second point, point. He's given us everything we need. You know, He chose to gift it to us. You know, something about 
a gift, though, and I, I put this quote, I think she's going to put it up there if you're taking notes or whatever, but it's we often, we often won't take advantage of a gift offered until we know the one who's giving. You know, we often won't take advantage of it. You, you ever have somebody offer you their house or their shop or their, you know, something that they have and and you go, well, thanks. You know, I've had people that, that I maybe I, I didn't know, but they, oh yeah, just come over anytime, just use it. Well, you know, I've had people offer a boat or offer a shop or after when I didn't have whatever I needed or something like that. And, and, you know, I was always a little bit hesitant. Why? Because I didn't know for sure what that meant. Because for some, it's like, yeah, it's awesome. Others, there's strings attached. Or, or they're so particular that you're going to mess something up. And if you break something, or t- I mean, it's like, oh, wow. Some people, you, if, you, if you break something, you know, you just buy a new one and they're okay with it. Some people, boy, they're mad. I mean, you know, it, it, it could get into all kinds of different deals. But if I, and I really know the person, you know, and they offer it, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive that gift, you know. And, and, and where, where, that's kind of the way it is with God. That's what I can begin to see in these verses is, is when we, the more, and that's why it, it comes as we know Him. The more we know Him and the more we can trust Him, then when He says it's ours, it's, it's ours. We'll take it. But sometimes we're hesitant to receive it or to walk in it or, or find the fulfillment in it, the fullness of it, because we don't really know Him. Third benefit of, of, of no, truly knowing God is to understand His promises. Look at verse 4. He says, And because of His glory and excellence, again, that His characteristics, He has given, again, given us great and precious promises. These are the pr- promises that enable you to share in His divine nature and escape the world's corrupted corruption caused by human desires. You know, King James uses the word lust right there. We talk about this in men's Bible study. I said, you guys, you need to understand something. Lust does not just mean sexual stuff. A lot of people, man, every time I read something about lust, I thought, oh God, you know. That was because there was a lot of that going on when I was young, when I was new in Christianity, when I'm trying to walk for God. But here's the thing. A strong desire, a a human desire, a strong desire for something is is what that's meaning. It could be a sexual thing. It could be a sexual sin. But it can also be something that anything that leads me away from God, anything that keeps me, brings me to a place of compromise and keeps me from being all that God wants me to be and walking in the divine nature of God. But notice something here. What does he mean by by promises? I think that's one of the greatest things that, that comes out of this verse. He says, and because of his glory and excellence, he's given to us great and precious promises. That, that these are the promises that enable us. I should have made another point. He, he, he enables us. He gives us the ability in, in the, uh, to be enabled to share in what? His divine nature. And in the, as a result, uh, we, 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 we escape the world's corruption through human desires. That strong desire for something. I, I, I don't know. Most of y'all probably don't have this problem, but some of us have had it in the past, where we had a strong desire for something that was so that drove us so hard. It could be for career, it could be for money, it could be for for you know some some good things. You know, there's good things and there's God things. I've had a lot of good things get in the way of God's best in my life, and I've had to correct. Some things, you know, make make some some of those things were things I bought. You know, horses are good. Yeah, they're real good until they start costing you money, or or until well, no, okay, they always cost you money. I laugh at the deal where you know guys showing videos, high gas prices, almost start riding my horse. I was like, you had never fed and shoed and and <laughs> took a horse to the vet, and and you don't realize it's still probably cheaper to drive your drive your truck. But you know what? Here's the thing. Sometimes we take a good thing and we let it get in the way of of God's best. We don't want to do that. 
Because the world, the devil and the world will take every advantage they can, an opportunity they can to corrupt us, to keep us out of where we need to be in the place that that we, we, we shouldn't be. Some of the promises that, you know, I'm not going to list them all. I think there's 300, I've heard 3,000 or some, some huge number of promises within the Bible. Around every, or, or all the time, God's making promises. He's promising things for us. But some of the, some of the promises that we can, uh, w- that, that help us walk in who God wants us to be is, is uh, you know, Acts 1 8 talks about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Go. And when the Holy Spirit comes, He said, I'm going to empower you to be a witness. To do what? Preach the gospel, share, do the works of Jesus, to, br- to continue what Jesus started. And, and that's one of the things that's a promise that helps us walk in all this. Also, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit um, in, in Acts chapter 2, then you talk about uh, 2 Peter 1, 4, uh, being in the likeness of God, the divine nature of God. We can, we can walk in that. We just read that. In, in Romans 12, 2, some of the promises of a transformed life by renewing of our mind. There's all these different promises that come. Galatians 2, 20, that we're dead to sin, but we're raised in life in Jesus Christ. Man, having a, having a revelation understand that, that, that we can be strengthened with might by His Spirit in our inner man. Ephesians 3.16, that's a promise. 1 John 1, 1.9, that when we, for, when we repent, we receive forgiveness. That's one, that's one good promise right there. Enables me to be put back in right standing with God when I repent. Repent, yes. I don't know how many times I had to repent. And then I had to repent again. And they had to repent again. Thank God His mercy is new every morning. There's another promise. Thank God God's, God's love carries uh, uh, more weight and the power of the blood of Jesus and the, and the opportunity to repent and receive forgiveness is, and, and be right again. First, uh, that's 1 John 1, 9. And, and then it were saved by grace. So, so let me just wrap this up by just giving you quickly steps to knowing God. Number one, we've got we to gotta call on Him. I'm not going to go into a lot of elaboration on that. We've got to call on Him. We've got to say, Lord, I, I need You. Yes, Lord, I need You. That, that's the beginning point of all that. The second thing is to, is to receive the gift of salvation. Sometimes we've got to receive the gift. Sometimes we don't want to, but we've got to receive it. I say we don't want to. We struggle with that. But you receive that gift. The third thing is that we've got to let the power of the Holy Spirit begin to transform us and allow the Word of God to renew our mind. Romans 12, 2 talks about that. Transform. Be transformed by the Word. The fourth thing is we've got to seek God. In other words, we've got to invite Him into our life. Matthew six thirty three says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus is basically saying what Peter said right here. Seek first the kingdom of God. You say, how do I do that? Seek Him in the morning and then all the way through the day. As you make your plans, seek Him. You know, one of the things that, 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 that helps with that is to just acknowledge God all day long. It's easy to, it's easy to miss that. I, I, I'm, I'm a pastor and I miss that sometimes. Go through the day and I hadn't acknowledged God but except in the morning. Go through, go through my plans and, 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 and do all the strategizing and all the things and, and not really giving an ear to God or, or, or even acknowledged Him in those things. Begin to continue to do that. Seek God. Fifth thing is develop a relationship with people who, who know Him. And, and this maybe is one of, one of the very most important things. Develop a relationship. Find people that, that know God. Really know God. You know, you may be young or you may be old, but you can find somebody, and, and you know what? Find somebody to j- just go to coffee with. You, you younger people might be watching or saying, a few that are here, you know, older people that know God, a lot of gray-haired people got a lot of wisdom. They got that gray hair from living life and making a lot of mistakes. And sometimes you don't think they know because they can't relate because they don't want to deal with this and they don't deal with that. But I can guarantee you that <laughs> they have some wisdom. But they, if they know God, how much better that is if they really know. But find people. Develop relationships. Friends from church. Friends, you know, you, you can't get the relationships you need with, and grow in the things of God without having those relationships. And the final thing is this, is just is surrender your life to Him. 
You know, there's a difference between being saved and going to heaven and being surrendered. You know, what Peter was talking about is, is that surrendered life, that tapping into God. And you know what? When we decide that we're no longer going to be afraid of where God might take us, and we just say, okay, God, I'm yours. He's probably not going to immediately jerk you out of the, the place that you're in and, and send you to Africa on a missions. You know, you're, you're probably not going to... It's probably not going to be super extreme at first. But I don't know about you, but there's a few times in my life that that, that, that would have been a great move to get me out of some things. In fact, I, I had a few moves like that. Get me out of some relationship. Get me out of some places like that. But you know what? Here's the thing. Develop those relationships. Ask yourself, are the friends around me leading me to God? Helping me to know God? Let's close in prayer. Father, we just come before you tonight. and Lord, we just thank and we praise you that it all begins with a relationship with you all begins with our, our 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 being willing to say lord i receive the gift of salvation you know there's probably a lot of people in here who are born again you've prayed the prayer you've received god but if you really dug down how deep do you know him once we've made jesus lord you know what here's the thing god's a a, a prayer away you actually, if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. So He's with you. And so, Father, I just pray that if there's all those that are, that are challenged by this message, that, that you're, they're asking the, being asked that question in their heart, their heart is, is saying, how well do I know God? And can I know Him more? I guarantee you that God's ready to meet you right where you're at. And I pray that, that, that Lord, you would draw those to you. And Father, if there's anybody within the sound of my voice who has not made Jesus Lord of their life, I pray that they would call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says they'd be saved. It's as simple as saying, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. And Lord God, come into my heart, come into my life. Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. When you pray that prayer, you're born again. When you mean that with your heart, God knows that and He comes in. So Father God, I just pray that any that that would be ready to make that decision, to pray that prayer, that they would contact us. If they're online, that they'd, that they'd reach out to us. They'd call that number, or they'd, they'd, they'd touch that uh, through, through Messenger. And Father, I praise you and I thank you that then we can help them on that life. We give you honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, uh, tonight we always want to give opportunity for prayer if you have prayer or need prayer uh we 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 do that and there's be a few that will dismiss and and go and pray if you want prayer for anything we'll believe god with you so at this time though we want to allow the earlies to come back and bless us with more music hang on yep Oh, that is right. That is right. Okay, uh, Kevin and Tracy are celebrating 36 years of marriage. Lord Jesus, God has done an amazing thing. Tracy, Tracy has, has uh, endured. So we want to pray for them. Yes, that's right. Well, let's give the earlies a hand. Let them minister to us. If you need prayer, come on up. You know what? Uh, I spent a lot of gas and a lot of time coming up here for a preacher to step all over my toes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I tell it like it is. You know, for some of y'all don't know, I'm not going, going to all my bad things in my life, but I was 50 years old when I started getting back with the Lord. And things would happen, and I would think, Lord, I'm not worthy to go up there in that church or go... I, I, I felt like I was unworthy, and I am. But he makes you worthy. So he gave me a song early in my ministry, our ministry, and it's because, uh, am I the one? Now, this is a hard song to sing. So y'all turn your head or something. Uh, but seriously, you know, you ever ask the Lord, Lord, am I the one? Well, I hope you enjoy this song, and pray that this old boy would get through it. Lord, are you sure that I'm the one? Can you forgive the 
things I've done I cannot see how I could be someone you love Lord do you know I walk in sin the road I walk that has no end Lord could it be that it's not me you're thinking of my heart I know you're real for sometimes down deep I feel your spirit showing me what I've become still Lord I ask how can this be someone like you someone like me if there's a way Show me today if I'm the one. They tell me, Lord, you died for me. You paid for sin on me. There is no way I can repay. For what you've done Oh Lord you know I'm just a man So help me now To understand How will you show When will I know If I'm the one In my heart I know you're real For sometimes down deep I feel your spirit is showing me what I've become still Lord I ask how can this be someone like you someone like me if there's a way show me today if I'm the one Lord, could it be that you love me and I'm the one? Thank y'all. Wait a minute, it's your turn. Y'all... Here we go. It's a little blue song. If your troubles seem like a river And there's darkness on each side If you feel like you are sinking And there's no place to run and hide Call on Jesus. He will help you makes no difference what you have heard he will bring you out of darkness if you will take him at his word he's the seeker of the seekers the ones who call upon his name he will wrap him Take him at his word. Does your burden 
seem much too heavy Do you sometimes stumble and fall When you look for someone to help Is there no one, no one at all Call on Jesus for the answer He will help you carry your load And it will be your greatest moment If you will take Him at His word He's a seeker of the seekers The ones who call upon His name soul song right there and I didn't I didn't take him at his word for a long time I was ashamed and embarrassed and scared and all that kind of stuff but I'm I'm like the pastor I the closer I get to him the, the more more it feels good you know it feels good for an old redneck like me to trust in someone who's so smart and so eternal and so kind and so loving and that's why Judy and I sing because it might be fun better sitting home in my rocking chair right along now. But the Lord didn't feel that way when he crawled up that old hill and they beat his back. I, I can't even probably describe it. He did that for me and you. And I'm so glad, glad to be with y'all tonight because we're all like mine. We all love the Lord and he loves us. Amen. Whew, that's enough of that. <laughs> turned upside down plant my feet on solid ground help me Lord help me Lord I have lost all my control put your peace within my soul help me Right. 
sorry, y'all. That was that's a hard song to sing. Okay, Don, you do get you, to do this do one. Do you need a replacement here? Yes. Here you go. Well, how much you pay? You can't afford me. Well, once I walked in darkness, was blind and could not see. Once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free. Said if I'd be faithful until the very end, He would give me blessings more than I could stand. Well, my God just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. He keeps me satisfied. He makes me whole. He fills my every need. My cup is overflowed. Just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. My God is like a river that flows down from above. He cleanses all his children, then fills him with his love. He will not forsake you no matter what you do. Call upon the master, he will see you through. My God just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. He keeps me satisfied, He makes me whole. He fills my every need, my cup is overflowed. My God just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. satisfied he makes me whole he fills my every need my cup is overflow my god just keeps on giving giving to my soul when i'm down he lifts me up he just keeps on giving when life is dry he fills my cup he just keeps on giving he is my god my lord my king he supplies my everything he just keeps on giving God just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. He keeps me satisfied. He makes me whole. He fills my every need. My cup is overflowed. My God keeps on giving. Well, my God just keeps on giving, giving to my soul. He keeps me satisfied. He makes me whole. He fills my every need. My cup is overflowed. God just keeps on giving and giving and giving and giving. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, why's that old clock on the wall say? Okay. It's just you and me, Lord. Just you and me. survive without giving in but I know a shelter it's made just for me there's a river that flows I know where it goes and that's where I Just you and me, Jesus, at the close of the day. I know you'll be with me when I kneel down and pray. My life is so I know 
because we didn't do it the last time or two that we were here and we got in trouble. Kevin, I know, I know. <laughs> Kevin, I know. you're in trouble already. Don't get in on this. <laughs> so this is for you, Kevin. This is holy as our God. And I'm, um, I'm so grateful the Lord used this old ignorant, poor, sinful man to give this song to because... I'm so blessed people come up and sit, it, you know, it touches them so forth, and it ought to because it's from the Lord, and I, I give him all the glory for it.
Thank you. Thank you. What a blessing. You know, I love, we love that song and, and just bring us into the presence of God. Uh, before we close, there's a couple of things that have come to my attention that we, we and I, in our prayer time, God was dealing with. First of all, we're, we're uh, glad to see the Janes up here. Uh, praise that the Janes lived through their wreck, their har harrowing uh, experience and uh, just lived, but now are, are recovering. So we're definitely glad to see them back. But, you know, uh, one of the things that we do is we try to pray and believe God with people for for needs and things that they have. And uh, one of the things is, is Bob Prochaska up there. Everybody knows, I probably knows Bob. If you don't, he's in the guy, that good looking guy in that blue sh shirt there. But he started having a little bit of issues. And, you know, we pray, we pray for these things and we don't bring them all out here. But this one, um, as we were praying up there, the Lord just showed me something, Bob, specific to pray for you. And then I talked to Donna and she said, well, that's that was good. But I my word that God gave me to pray for you and we were agreeing on is that you'd have not only strength in your legs, but your feet. And I saw, you know, in my this the Lord show me your from your feet up. And uh, she said you were kind of having this one foot that was giving you the problems that was causing you to sometimes fall. So uh, we're going to agree with you. We've already prayed over it, but we're agreeing with you for strength. So as you leave and as you go, you guys get into agreement. There's no stronger bond than the two of you. You agree that you are going to have strength in your in your body, in your in your legs, in your feet, so that you can have stability. Amen. So uh, we're agreeing with you for that. There's also one other need that, uh, that, that was presented to me. And there was an individual that had a situation. And I'm not going to name who it is. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't want to embarrass anybody. But there, there was a, a financial need. And a lot of times a church, as elders, we, you know, we just write the check or, or do whatever. But the Lord in, had, had also instructed me to do, do it different. And this individual and the church will take care of it so that it's, it's not, we don't give cash to individuals. But we want to meet this need and it's $3,500. So you can either write the check or you can write a portion of the check if God leads you. We're not asking, begging for money. We don't do that. I don't usually talk about money. But if you want to give towards that, that individual, I can, I can let you know, the, the elders have already talked about it, that we trust that this is what the Lord would have us to do. And we don't normally do this, bring it up like this. But if you want to give towards that, it's 50, 100, whatever, if you write in a check, write it to CTCC, but write in the memo, um, car just right right car and we're not buying a car but we're fixing a car and so if you want to do that if the lord just leads you to do that give and the church will make up the difference soon i've already talked about what we're going to do another person so i mean it, it'll come in that's what the amazing thing is is uh, is is that god provides and so let's pray as we close over this father we just come before you and Lord, we thank you for this service, this, this opportunity to come to get to know you more. And Lord, we lift up these needs. We pray for, praise you for the praise reports of, of the recovery and the healing for Don, for, for all these others. We also thank that we can stand in agreement for Bob's strength in his foot, feet and legs and body. We thank you for the others that are on that prayer list that are battling cancer, battling other needs, that we stand in agreement for health, for miracles, for recovery, for restoration for wisdom, for strength. And Father God, we thank and praise you that you're showing up in the, in, the, in the needs and the lives of these people. Father, I thank you and I praise you that you've also given us opportunity in, in our abundance, in our extra, and even in our faith to sow a seed to give when there's need. And so Father, we just, I just pray that you'd move in, in upon those that desire to give to see a need met, a specific need. And I thank you and I praise you that, that they'll be led of the Spirit of God. And Lord, your word says that when we give in that manner, that you cause it to be returned to us and returned to us in abundance. And so, Father, for each one who gives and sows that seed, we trust that you're providing in a, in a real and powerful way the need met, even for that one who gives. We give you praise and glory for it. We ask you to, to guide and direct us as we go through our week and bless 
those around us in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, if you want to write that, write that. If you got if you got cash, let us know. Get it in an envelope. But you are dismissed. Be blessed. I will.